Howdy folks, welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. I made you put up with nearly 40 minutes of World of Warcraft yesterday, so to make up for it, here's nearly 40 minutes of World of Tanks. This is Jaegertron, driving the T-29. American Tier 7 heavy tank, and a fantastic machine. And he's on the new Stalingrad map, and this is the first time I think I've shown a replay on this map. I haven't played it much myself. Um, the first game that I saw on this map was a Tier 9 game. I was in a Tier 9 Centurion Mark 7, uh, along with Quickie Baby, also in a Centurion, and we got our asses handed to us by an Object 704 driver. So, yeah, that wasn't very good. Since then, I've only seen this map come up in the rotation once, so I am definitely not an expert on where to go and what to do in whichever tank you're driving and you end up on Stalingrad. However, having said that, I do like the look of the terrain over on the eastern side of the map, over in that direction where most of Jaegertron's team have ended up, down by the riverbank. And when Jaegertron gets over there, you'll see exactly why I mean that. Particularly if you're in the kind of tank, like the T-29, that loves to go hull down. I do like the T-29. In fact, I don't think there are many people out there who have a T-29 and don't like it. It is an incredibly good tank. I only spotted the Cromwell, and judging by the way the Cromwell lurched to a halt and started scrambling to get in around the corner of a building, looks like the Cromwell spotted him as well. Or possibly he's manoeuvring to get out of the way of the chaffy. Either way, he just took a big old hit. And with the Cromwell backing off, it's safe for Jaegertron to continue down this road. Stalingrad's a funny old map. There's a mix of... There's lots and lots of cover and concealment, but there's lots and lots of open space as well. So, it's got that mix of ground that... There really is a little something for everybody here. It's a technically a city map, but it's not like Himmelsdorf. Uh, artillery can still play a useful role on this map. There's plenty of opportunity for big, tough, heavily frontally armoured heavy tanks to get stuck in in the city itself. But there's still plenty of open ground and long, wide roads so that medium tanks and light tanks can get around. And then there's ground like over here on the coastal side. Coastal side, listen to me. So by the river side, where tanks that like to go hold down can fight it out. I do think it's a very very well designed map, I just haven't quite figured out all the different locations yet. And of course while I've been rambling on about the map half of Jaegertron's team is dead and they've only killed one enemy tank. Yep, it's one of those teams. The immediate situation around Jaegertron isn't actually that bad. He's got some good tank destroyers behind him. He's just killed a Burt. There was no need for that, was there? He wasn't hurting anybody. Anyway. As long as the tank destroyers behind him don't do anything stupid, he can stay hold down here. And now he's just killed a Tog. I could really go off this Jaegertron guy. <laughs> there, was, there was no need for that. Well, and of course, as soon as I say as long as the tank destroyers behind him don't do anything stupid, and then the T-25-2 goes ahead and suicides. And they've killed the Chaffee as well and the inevitable death of the T-25-2 after just yoloing forward right into the teeth of the enemy. But the SU-152 behind him is pretty good. Now there's nothing he can do about that light tank that just slipped through, but there's plenty of tanks behind him that can take care of him. And yep, they've got him. And in this position here, this is why, well, the T-29, when you can get this thing hold down, and over here on the river side of the Stalingrad map, there are lots and lots of opportunities, lots of dips and folds in the ground that makes it very, very easy to get a tank like this hold down and take advantage of this fantastic frontal turret armour. Providing you can keep all of those tanks in front of you at medium to long range, they're never going to hit your commander's cupola, or if they do, it's going to be more down to luck than judgement. And he's having a great game here, but he's in the perfect terrain for the T-29 tank. None of them have got shots at anything but that super strong gun mantlet and turret front. Enemy team is capping, so they're going to need to deal with this T-43 quickly. And the T-43 isn't feeling quite so brave now. All of his friends are dead, is he? But you'll notice, looking at the scores, that every single enemy tank who's died 
including the T-43, but not including the KV-1S, has died on this side of the map, over by the river. And it's mostly been down to that SU-152 and Jaegertron, assisted by the artillery, here in the T-29. Now the artillery's in trouble. Um, and so is that AT-7. Well, the artillery's gone, and the AT-7's in deep trouble. He hung back a little bit too much, he's just a little bit too slow, and there is not a massive amount that Jaegertron can do to help him. And what's happening right now is, well, the enemy team are shouting, no cap, kill all, aren't they? And that is a very, very, very unfortunate position for that SU-12244 to be in. <laughs> managed to get himself stuck with the top of his hull where he has no armour at all showing to Jaegertron's 105mm gun and that was one of the easiest kills I have ever seen enemy T29, oh, SG-152 takes him out useful kill, gets a little hung up on the terrain there struggling to point the gun at the target costs him a shot at the BDR and it's not looking quite so desperate anymore is it? At least three of the five enemy tanks still in play are right in front of them. The BDR, the T-29 and the IS. Who's going to be the first one to stick their nose out? There's the BDR. Doesn't have a shot at him, but they don't have a shot at him either. There's the T-29. T-29's got a lot of health, but seriously? And the SU-152 hits him as well. Drives around a corner sideways on. Has clearly never heard of angling his armour. Watch this, ah yes. <laughs> this. Well, he tried to outflank. Unfortunately, he's just been pummeled in the side by the SU-152. All he can shoot at is Jaegertron's turret front. And I think he's just realised that, actually, no, this wasn't such a good idea after all. But get a load of this. He backs up. Jaegertron hits him again. He backs up, fires on the move. He's never going to hit anything doing that. He's out of the way of the SU-152, but he manages to park his tank up at such an angle <laughs> on that rubble that he makes his armour completely useless and that's another kill for Jaegertron. Unfortunately despite some fantastic support work from the SU-152 he's now completely alone. He's the last tank left alive on his team. It's one against four and there's the Chaffee, that cheeky little bugger. Very brave move from the Chaffee, he's a one-shot kill, his turret top takes a hit from the BDR and he's getting a little flustered here. Who's he going to shoot at? Well, oh, he missed that. Would have been... He's missed the Chaffee. The BDR can't really see anything of his tank other than the very top of his turret here. So he's focusing down the Chaffee. No idea where the enemy T-29's gone. We haven't seen him in about two minutes. <laughs> he's just been killing tanks left, right and centre. And there goes the Jaffe, which frees up his flank and allows him to concentrate on the BDR. With no sign of the T-29. Where the hell is it? It does not have a lot of health left. And I think we can assume that the T-29 driver is not the sharpest tool in the box if he goes driving around a corner sideways in front of an SU-152 and a T-29. But there, ah, there he is. Well, it took him an awful long time to travel about 50 metres without doing anything useful in the meantime. And... Oh, the T-29 does have a very, very good gun, but it is not the most accurate. Of course, Jaegertron is hull down, and the other T-29 isn't. And with his great gun depression, Jaegertron can make use of that hull down position. Or, you know, you can go after him. <laughs> oh, where's the BDR gone, do you think? That could be the T-37 capping. It could be the BDR. Only one real way to find out. I'm going to laugh my arse off if it's the BDR though, because yeah, they were trying to cap four minutes ago, and then they thought, no, we're going to kill everybody instead. <laughs> Didn't work out too well for them, did it? <laughs> it probably is the BDR, because the T-37 hasn't been spotted the entire game, and they've had tanks all over the map and nobody's seen the T-37, so there is a very, very good chance that the T-37 is AFK. 
Enemy SU-100M1 driver is offering Jaegertron his congratulations on an easy win, which is a little insulting to the BDR driver, but it probably does mean that the BDR is capping alone because the T-37 has been AFK the entire match. And where is he? Well, there's only one place he can be. He's got to be behind that building. Yeah, there he is. It is the BDR. Yeah, it's no use trying to cap now, Sonny Jim. You had your chance five minutes ago and you blew it. <laughs> You're not going to win by capping now. Sorry, but nope. Oh, and that is not a very good shot. That is never going to penetrate, not even against the BDR. You'll notice that on the bit, well, the BDR's come out to fight. <laughs> He's thought, screw it. If I'm going to lose, I may as well get some damage done. And Jaegertron is now out of armor-piercing ammunition, and his choices are limited supply of APCR or HE. He very, very wisely chooses APCR, because can you imagine how embarrassing it would be to be in that kind of situation and lose because your high explosive wasn't penetrating. <laughs> yeah, better safe than sorry. And in chat there, the SU-100M1 player on the enemy team is telling Jaegertron where to find the T-37, which is technically a reportable offence and can get your account banned or suspended, but he's not really giving away the location of his teammates because that's what the offence is. The teammate is somebody who actually plays on your team. The T-37 hasn't. He's still sitting in the cap circle. He's been AFK the entire game. So while Jaegertron is uh, cruising down towards the enemy cap circle, we'll just uh, pull the camera back so you can have a wide-angle view at this fantastically good-looking new map that Wargaming have introduced in patch 9.4. Look at that. It is astonishingly pretty. Don't often really get the chance, and it looks like Jaegertron was <laughs> busy admiring the view as well. Piled right into the wreckage of that Cromwell. But you don't often get the chance to just stop and admire the view when you're playing World of Tanks. And it really is an incredibly pretty and good looking game. However, the drama is not over yet. Look at how much ammunition Jaegertron has left. He only has two rounds of high explosive ammunition left. And you can certainly kill a light tank like the T-37 with two rounds of high explosive, providing your first shot doesn't go into his tracks and explode almost harmlessly, doing minimal splash damage to the hull of the tank on the other side. So now he's only got one shot left. He's going to have to start doing some ramming damage <laughs> in order to win this game. And the tragedy is, if that arsehole in the T-37 had actually been playing the game, he would have won. This would have been a loss for Jaegertron. The T-37 absolutely excels at circling in open ground like this, circling and killing heavy tanks like the T-29, especially if the T-29 only has one shot remaining and then has to ram you to death in order to try to kill you. Even the world's worst T-37 driver couldn't possibly have lost in this kind of situation. Of course, even the world's worst T-37 driver has to actually be present at the controls of his tank in order to not lose in this kind of situation. The enemy team must have been raging so hard in chat. And who can blame them? They were robbed of a win by this arsehat not in the T-37. At the same time, running up a score like this and then losing to a guy who'd been AFK the entire game would have been a bit of a tragedy for Jaegertron. No, don't shoot in the tracks. Remember what happened the last time? Sure, you'll probably kill him. <laughs> but, yeah, let's, you know, definitely killing is better than probably killing. There you go. That's the shot. Game over. And it's been a while since I've seen a collection of medals like that in a game of World of Tanks. Ace Tanker, Kolobanov's medal, Pool's medal, Faden's medal, Steel Wall, High Calibre, Defender, Top Gun. He'd have got an Invader as well if he hadn't done so much damage to himself. <laughs> Ramming that T-37 in the enemy cap circle. That is fantastic. And I think it's fairly safe to say that in this episode of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, you've seen some good, some bad and some ugly, all in the first replay. How the hell are we going to top that? Oh, we'll have a go. See what we can do with the next replay. This is Epoch Zero in the Walker Bulldog. Well, I say it's Epoch Zero. This is my mate Dan. And no, not the War Thunder Dan. He's Turkish. This is Dan. Dan. 
English Dan. That got confusing very quickly. <laughs> Those of you who've watched any of the uh, Airsoft videos that I did last year um, will have seen Dan. He's the guy who runs the Airsoft games at Combat South on the weekends. A couple of guys pointed out in comments that, oh yeah, definitely ex-British Army there, you can tell them a mile away. Dan's actually never spent a day in anybody's military. He just fakes it very, very, very well. And he's recently started getting back in a world of tanks, and he's just unlocked the Walker Bulldog. And when I say he's just unlocked it, I mean he has just unlocked it. This is a 100% stock Walker Bulldog tank. No upgrades on it whatsoever. So that means that the 76mm gun on this tank has 150mm of penetration. And this is a tier 9 game. Oh dear. <laughs> He does have a good crew on it, though. Uh, he's transferred the crew from other American tanks. He does have Sixth Sense. And I'm amazed that he did not get spotted. In th This bush is not the biggest bush in the world. He's got proper, light, passive scouting tank fire discipline. He's not shooting at these tanks and giving his position away. And how the hell that Centurion didn't spot him. Well, he did eventually. Okay. <laughs> Sixth Sense kicked in. I'm amazed that he was able to make such effective concealment out of that tiny little bush on top of that hill for as long as he did. But he's definitely outstayed his welcome now. He's a tier 7 stock Walker Bulldog light tank in a tier 9 match. It's not his job to lead the charge. He's done his job. He spotted the enemy tanks coming in. It ain't his fault. His team isn't able to take advantage of the spotting work that he did. So it's time to start harassing. Looking for opportunities to get around the flanks of these enemy tanks. However, take a look at the map. Two thirds of his team are on this side of the map. Two thirds of the enemy team are on the other side of the map. So the enemy team are gonna win the forest and Dan's team is gonna win the flag area, right? Yeah, funny things were that simple. I'm actually half right in my prediction. The, the enemy team do win the forest quite easily because they outnumber Dan's team two to one over there. But Dan's team over on this side of the map, despite outnumbering the enemy tanks two to one over here by the cap circle, are not going to do nearly as well. Um, not nearly as well at all. <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a slaughter and uh, Dan's going to end up fighting for his life in a stock tier 7 light tank in a tier 9 game. As stock tanks go, you know, the, the Walker Bulldog isn't that bad. I've definitely driven worse stock tanks than this. I have actually just unlocked the Walker Bulldog myself, and the only thing that I've managed to upgrade on it so far are the tracks. I've played one game in it, stock, and it's not terrible. It'll still do the top speed of the fully upgraded Walker Bulldog. It just takes a bit longer to get there. Didn't take the enemy team long to get here though. They are now coming at the remaining tanks on Dan's team from two different directions. The only reason they're not coming at them from four different directions is because Dan's team are stuck in one corner of the map. And, uh, oh no, this is not good. But despite having the stock gun and everything else stock on the Walker Bulldog, and despite only having 150 millimeters of penetration, as stock tanks go, I have definitely seen worse. What's this? That's a Centurion. Now the Centurion is a very mobile medium tank. It doesn't have the best top speed, but it moves very, very well. Get a load of this. He is just absolutely humiliating this guy. Now you expect to see light tanks being able to do that sort of thing to slow heavies like Tiger II, for example, but not highly mobile mediums like the Centurion Mark I. So the fact that you can still do that in the Walker Bulldog, even though it's 100% unupgraded, is pretty impressive. And well done to Dan for spotting the opportunity and taking advantage of it. He had a very, very limited window of opportunity in which it was safe to get over there, circle and kill that Centurion, and then get the hell out of there before his backup arrived. And that's exactly where light tanks like this excel spotting the opportunities to jump on top of tanks that have been isolated from the rest of their team and just punish them before any kind of support arrives. You tend to get more of those opportunities in the latter stages of a game. 
than you do in the beginning and the middle stages. But if you spot the opportunity and you're quick about it, you can get results like that. Unfortunately for Dan, no such opportunities really exist at the moment. The enemy tanks are all in positions where they can mutually support each other, which means charging out alone in a light tank against enemy tanks that are on still most of their health. It takes time when you're firing a 76mm gun to kill off a tank like a Lerva or a Yag Tiger when you're doing this amount of damage per shot. And he's burning through his APCR ammunition here at a frightening rate. It doesn't do a lot of damage and it's not actually terribly accurate, but it has a ferocious rate of fire. This is costing him an absolute fortune, but he doesn't really have any other options. There are three tanks that he knows of up there. None of them are sitting there isolated, just big inviting targets for a light tank to outflank and start harassing. If, for example, he tried to rush out there and outflank that Yag Tiger, well, there's a Lerva and an AMX 5100 sitting right next to them, and they'd just kill him. Not only that, you can see he keeps checking over the other side of the map, looking for opportunities to break cover and start outflanking. But there's an IS-8 out there somewhere, and he doesn't know where he is. The chances are, if he breaks cover now, he's going to get spotted and he's going to die. And while he is sitting here, he is at the very least getting some great side shots. Or he was until the Yag Tiger realised and turned around. He was getting some great side shots at some very, very nasty enemy tanks. And that's when the IS-8 suddenly appears. So now he knows where the IS-8 is. Now he can actually start planning what he's going to do next. And there's only two of them left. <laughs> <laughs> so his options are kind of limited he can't hang around up here that guy up front is a one shot kill and there's an AMX 5100 a Lerva, a Yag Tiger and an IS-8 closing in on him and he's been spotted this is the risk that you take as soon as you break cover but he still gets some shots in on the Yag Tiger and the Yag, he's done a lot of damage to that Yag Tiger and the Lerva just from sitting in cover and, and doing what he could, but now he's got to get out of here. He's the last tank left alive in his team. The enemy team are capping, and they've seen him. They know where he's going. And there are tanks on the enemy team that, while they can't match his top speed, there's only a limited amount of space for him to run and hide in, and they can close him down and catch him and just shepherd him into one corner of the map. They've spotted him again. This thing's quick. Oh, they've blown his tracks off. Repair kit down. Get the hell out of there. And they're coming after him. <laughs> He's... <laughs> He's returning fire. Oh, bless him. 76mm <laughs> gun at that. Well, you know, it just makes you feel better to be firing back. He's taking a hit. He starts weaving. And it's that 5100, he's taken another hit. One more. Whoa, it just, just missed. Is the 5100... No, he's just missed him again, and now he's safe. For the moment. And he's going for the artillery. That was a bit tense. <laughs> uh, but look at this thing go. As stock tanks go, I have to say, the M41 Walker Bulldog is pretty impressive. It's no wonder people say this thing's overpowered. I... I can't wait to get mine fully upgraded. It is just such a fun tank to drive. And they're definitely not... In fact, they, that's it. They're, they've all moved out of the cap circle. They are now all coming after him. <laughs> no cap, kill all. Well, now they know where he is. He's, he's found the artillery. Is he going to be able to nail this guy before they get him? It shouldn't be too difficult. Of course, now they know exactly where he is, and he's run out of places to hide because they're going to be coming in, pinning him into this corner. And, in fact, Dan has decided, screw that, honour has been satisfied. <laughs> and he's just going to charge them. There it is. Time to suicide. <laughs> and there they are. They've chased him all the way through the forest. And he's so very nearly... What's this? IS-8 misses him. In the time it takes the IS-8 to reload, watch this AMX-5100. Oh, he's nearly got him. He's nearly got him. Come on, one more shot. One more shot. No, <laughs> it's not going to happen. IS-8 doesn't miss him with his second shot. But, have a look at the scores of this game. Remember, 
stock tier 7 light tank in a tier 9 game. Yep, that's almost 1000 experience on a defeat. And there's no heroic resistance award there. He didn't get any battle hero medals. That's just experience on a defeat. <laughs> he didn't quite come top on damage done. That award, well on his team anyway, goes to the IS-8 driver. But, you know, he's in an IS-8 in a tier 9 game. You'd expect him to do well. Dan, on the other hand, is in a stock tier 7 light tank in a tier 9 game. Comes second on damage done and experience earned. And definitely had the most entertaining match. Despite what his little friend in the T29 on his team had to say during the course of the match. Let's just take a look at how the T29 did. This guy drove 180 metres, didn't fire a single shot, died, and then had nothing better to do but give Dan shit in chat all the way through the course of that game. Ah, oh, world of tanks. You so silly. Anyway, moving along swiftly. Final replay in today's video. Uh, I do like to end on a high note. I, I used to put the ugly one at the end of these good, bad and ugly video clips. You know, the good one would be at the start, the second one would just be an utter disaster. And the third one would usually be a real heartbreaker of a loss, but it was just getting too depressing. <laughs> it was... People were coming to the end of the video and they were like, oh, I was going to go out for a meal tonight, but now I just don't want to. <laughs> so we're going to have the good one at the end. Um, and this is a good one. And I do like to see light tank drivers doing well. Particularly when it's a light tank that, um, well, this is Jayanjo, who I'm probably mispronouncing, but if I am, I apologise. And he is in the WZ-132. It's the Chinese Tier 8 light tank. And with the introduction of the other new light tanks in patch 9.3, a lot of people, myself included, were left wondering, well, what's the point of tanks like the WZ-132 anymore? You know, there's absolutely nothing special about this tank anymore, given the introduction of tanks like the T-49, the T-54 lightweight, and the RU-251 Sperpanzer. And yet, just because this tank isn't the same as those, doesn't mean it's a bad tank. You know, it doesn't suddenly become a bad tank just because other tanks have been introduced. It always has been a good tier 8 light tank. It's still a good tier 8 light tank. And just look at what it can do in the hands of somebody who really knows what he's doing. Look at the position he's in here. He's got enemy tanks to the left. He's got enemy tanks to the right. If he stops moving for a second, he's going to get hit. Look at the STA-1 behind him. Absolutely just getting completely annihilated. <laughs> and he's gone. There's the smallest depression in the ground here that Gianjo is able to use, providing he keeps moving, to keep him safe from fire from the left and fire from the right. This is some breathtakingly good light tank driving right here. In a tank that a lot of people wrote off simply because it wasn't one of the new tier 8 light tanks. And it's worth pointing out that he's not just ruffle stomping noobs and bad players here. These are both two good teams. So he cannot afford to take any chances whatsoever. While he's in this tiny patch of low ground here, sure, all that they really have shots at is his turret, but his turret only has 48 millimeters of armor at the most. And with that bad Chinese gun depression, he's got to really work to find the positions like that from which he can actually put accurate fire in and kill tanks like that KV-4. And speaking of the new tier eight light tanks, there's the German, the RU-251 Sperpanzer who's in a similar position to Gianjo, but with one crucial difference. The RU-251 does not have fantastic gun elevation, and with the arse of his tank pointed up in the air like that, it is very, very difficult for him to actually put shots in at Gianjo, and he has problems of his own, and he's just been taken out, and not before time two, because now there's another threat. <laughs> a T110E5 tier 10 heavy tank. The pace of this game has just been absolutely relentless. He hasn't stopped firing and moving since he got into this position right at the start. And he's just taken his first bit of damage. T110 E5 managed to plant one. Not entirely sure where it went in. Possibly into the rear of the tank. Possibly into the front of the turret. The turret armour on this tank at its best is only 48mm thick. And that's why he has to keep moving. It's not like he's driving a T54 and he can just rely on his turret armour to keep him safe. This tank has no armour. At all. He has to keep moving, he has to stay mobile, he has to deny them shots at him. Or make it difficult 
if they are going to take shots at him by staying mobile and he's doing a great job of it and the amount of shots that have been fired at him in this game and he's continuing to put fire in on that T110E5 who doesn't know which way to turn his gun he points the gun one way he's going to get shot in the flank by Gianjo he turns the gun to face Gianjo well he's now he's now getting shot at from three sides and that was inevitable Right, nice job. Now you can take a break. Except, no you can't, because now there's a T-54 shooting at him from the other side. This has just been relentless. And watch this... I, I, I'm at a loss for words. The, the way he takes advantage of this tiny scrap of cover. And just watch what he does to this T-54. Pops in, he pops out, he takes the shots when he can never given that guy an opportunity to aim and that's the trick when you're driving a tank like this that has such bad armor giving the enemy an opportunity to stop and aim at you is fatal and so he doesn't do it backwards forwards in out dodging ducking weaving i'd hate to be the engineer responsible for maintaining the transmission of this tank <laughs> when he gets it back to the depot after the battle well that t-54 was had enough He's done absolutely nothing, and he's lost so much health just shooting fruitlessly at this tiny little terror of a Tier 8 light tank as he zips backwards and forwards in and out of cover, making so much out of that tiny scrap of cover that was available to him. Breathtaking display of light tank driving from Gianjo here in the WZ120. Well, that's one of the T-54s been nailed. It's not the one that he was exchanging shots with, though. He's still running for his life. And I think it's at this stage where the tide of the battle has finally turned. And it wasn't until right now that it was pretty clear that the enemy team were going to lose. And there's the Leopard. <laughs> Gianjo, the first person in the match to put a shot into the Leopard. More importantly, the last person in the match to put a shot into the Leopard. Well-deserved kill. Going over the hill for the ISU 152. Spots of Ferdinand. Takes a shot at the Ferdinand. Ferdinand's gone. Can concentrate on the ISU now, who's being circled by a T-54. Helps out the T-54, puts a shot into his tracks, immobilises him, and does some damage. T-54 gets the reload in first, and claims the kill. And now there's only two of them left. Artillery and the T-54, who we last saw, running away like brave Sir Robin. There's the artillery. He's probably not going to get the kill, but he is going to get some damage done. And now there's just the T-54 left, and that was one hell of a game. No idea where the T-54 has gone. He was last seen heading up into the northeastern corner of the map where the artillery was, but there's tanks closing in from all different sides. And there he is. Oh, you sneaky little Russian. How the hell? Oh, he's taking a shot. And he's missed. Ah. <laughs> Not today, T-54. Not this WZ-120. No, sir. Up at the hill, behind the farmhouse, his one chance now is to run south. There's tanks closing in from two different directions. He's probably not going to make it, but it would be fantastic if Gianjo could get the kill. That would really just be the icing on the cake. He's done the lion's share of damage to that guy. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Yes, he's done it. Ah. <laughs> That was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, tier 8 light tank, tier 10 game. Fine against good players, 4,000 damage done. No problem. Gianjo, ladies and gentlemen, in the WZ120, tier 8 Chinese light tank. I did promise you we were going to end on a high. <laughs> and I hope we delivered. As always, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.